Howdy cowboys and cowgirls, I'm Cowboy Jack, and today I'm really excited. We're at the Rosenberg Railroad Museum. That means we're gonna get to see all kinds of trains and actually see some real trains in action, go inside some train cars, see some model trains run, and all kinds of other fun stuff. Come on, let's go check it out. Did you know they have a whole room dedicated to model trains? Model trains are like full-size big trains, but only a little bit smaller. Let's go take a look at it. You see that big train? <laughs> we're gonna go inside that in just a little bit, but right now we're gonna go watch some real model trains in action. You don't realize how big a train car is until you get right up next to it. They're really big. But don't stop now, because we're gonna go look at those model trains and watch the mini trains run all over the place. Come on. Do you guys wanna skip with me? I bet we could skip over there. It's still a little ways. Come on. Here we are. The model train room. Come on in. Look at this. Do you guys see all these model trains? Look over here. It's like an actual landscape that they've built and miniaturized inside. Miniaturized means that they made it really tiny, but it's built just like life really is out west. This looks like some kind of scene from maybe Arizona or Colorado. Guys, come look over here, look over here. What do you see right there? <laughs> what are those? Yeah, that's right. The railroad actually was responsible for shipping livestock for a long time. So you see all those horses and cows? And even a little cowboy riding a bucking book bronco. <laughs> Look right over here. Boy, do you see what that is? It looks like it's some kind of mine. And these little things are like conveyor belts to take the products and load them onto trains so they can go elsewhere. This is so exciting. One of my favorite things about this track is that there's actually tunnels. Can you guys see the tunnels? There you go. Now look that way. Look at those tunnels. No telling where those go. Wow. Those tunnels are really cool. If you come over here, it's like we're going up in the mountains. The trains will go through the tunnels so they don't have to go up and down real big. They're going to go flat through the tunnels. We didn't even talk about this. There's a big lake right there. All that water and the train goes right across the railway bridge, right over the waterfall. Man, that's neat. Do you guys wanna take a look and see what an actual model train does when it's running and moving down the tracks? Come over here. They have this great platform so you can stand up high and watch it from above. You guys go ahead and climb up and I'm gonna turn it on. Whoa! Look at that, there's a train running by right there. Oh, look at that, he's going really fast. Those look like oil tanker cars. That means he's carrying oil to its final destination. And then back there, we have a passenger train. See those cars? There's actually little passengers inside there riding to their destination. They go from point A to point B all along the tracks.
Hey, look over here. Boy, do you see what this is? This is a train depot. This is where people would get on the passenger trains. Just like this. See the trains coming into the station right here. Wow. Look at this. Can you see all the way over here? This is a big hotel. Come over here. Look at this over here. Right outside of the train depot. There's a big hotel. It's like a boom in the There's a lot of people out there. Boy, this model train city is really neat. There's all kinds of things in here. I see a bank, a hotel, an antique store. There's even an ice cream shop. Guys, you see the ice cream shop? Oh, I like ice cream. And then look over here, look right there. That's a train switching tower. We're actually gonna get to go inside one of those really soon. Look at Oh, look, there's a whole nother little town up in the mountains over here. These look like a lot of different little houses, but I see there's a bicycle shop right there, and there's a police car standing over there. This is up in the mountains. Whoa, look at that. I actually see some people exploring the mountainside over there. You see those little guys in there? This guy's climbing right here. Looks like he's having a great time climbing that mountain. Here comes a train right in front of you. Whoa! Look at that! The cars are driving over the top and the train's just going through the tunnel. Wow, that's a big bridge back there and that train just went right over. Look back there, this train's gonna come right down the tracks and come through this tunnel right by us here. He's going across the bridge. He's really fast. Here it comes, it's gonna come through the tunnel. Oh. Did you see on that train? He actually has a real headlight. That's so neat. We gotta talk about this. There's some boats down in the river down here. Did y'all see those boats? And you remember that old song where it says, I've been working on the railroad? Well, look at these guys down here. They are working on the railroad. Boy, there's just so much to see on this model train set. So much detail. Ooh, I even see a really cool piece of machinery there. That's called a forklift. See the little forklift down there? Wow! Well, hey guys, this model train was so neat. I had a lot of fun in here. We learned a lot about trains, like how they go down the tracks and they go across different bridges and all kinds of things. But you know what they have here? They have real trains that we can go inside. Do you guys want to go check one out? Come on! I told you guys we were gonna see some real trains. Wait, this isn't a real train. Come here, come here. Look at this. This is a whole train made out of wood. It's on the way to see the real train, but this is really neat too. You could sit in here and pretend like you're driving the train with the steering wheel. Hello. <laughs> 
Oh, I wish it was a real train. I'd blow the, blow the horn and go, doo, doo. <laughs> Wow. Cowboy Jack's a little big for the wooden train, but I'm not too big for the real train, and that's what we're going to go see now. All right, see you later, big little train. Come on, let's cut through the trees. We'll take the secret way. You guys, hey, stand right there. I'm going to show you something cool. That's a long, long time ago. And she's really pretty now because she's been fully restored. But this is all original. And, and this was, this whole train used to be made out of 100% wood. They don't allow wood on the tracks anymore. So now that it's been covered with a piece of metal all the way around. It sounds really solid. Wow. Well, let's go inside and see it. So this is like the observation deck of the train car. You can stand up here and look out and see what's coming down the tracks. It's really exciting. There's a real door on it, just kind of like a door you'd have on your house too. Now this train car is really fancy. It used to be owned by the Canadian government and this was their official government train car. So if they had government officials going from point A to point B by train, they rode in this actual car. That means like the president or the prime minister of Canada might have ridden in this car back in the day. Looks like a great spot to, whoa. I feel better sitting down in here. It's nice and cool, wow. You see all these wood panels? It's really extravagant in here because like I said, this was meant for the government of Canada. So there's these really cool chandeliers and light fixtures throughout. Wow, there's a really long hallway. Get a look down this hallway. All right, let's go in the, we're inside the train and let's take a look around. It has bedrooms in this train. So this is like a bedroom, see? There's your bed. It's not as cozy as the bed you have at home, but it's still nice if you're on the rails. And it even has a little sink where you can wash your hands. Somebody left their top hat here. That's hilarious. I like my cowboy hat better, but a top hat's really cool too. And see, there's a toilet. And that's shared between two different bedrooms on the train. So you can see right, you walk right through there to the other room. This is really neat. And we've only seen about half of the train so far. Look at this, it's a little cramped, but I wanted to show you guys this. Remember how I told you this train was originally built out of wood, but it's covered in metal now? Well, this is the actual original wood when it was built in the 1870s. And this is the original cloth. So it, it's been a long time, the cloth didn't hold up over time, but this museum spent a lot of time and effort to make it look like it used to. And I think they did a really good job. It's really fun to get to go back in time and see what this train was like in the 1870s. I mean, back then you might look out this window and see a buffalo or like some cowboys. You might see anything. It was the Wild West. Whoa, <laughs> my favorite part of the train. Look here, this is the kitchen. So it doesn't look like much right now. There used to be a stove right here. There's not one in here anymore. But they have a full sink where they had running water and you could come in here and do dishes and get some water to drink and all kinds of stuff. They have all these cabinets up here and shelves. They actually have really fine china on here because like I said, it was for the Canadian government. All right, well, let's just head down the hallway right here. It's like there's one more room, but then back here, this is what they would call the dining area. The dining area is where you could come and sit down and enjoy a meal with somebody. 
and kind of kick your shoes up a little bit and relax. And there's a lot of interesting things here. Look at this nice stained glass. I mean, this was built in the 1870s. That's really old. That's even older than Cowboy Jack. It's older than your parents. It's older than your grandparents. It's really old. It's so exciting. And all this wood is so intricate. There's so much detail here in this train. I've never even been inside a train before. And then here we are walking around in one. I thought it'd be like really cramped and like feeling tiny, but it's actually really big. I mean, I can stretch my arms out, my legs out. I feel good in here, it's really fun. All right, well, let's go see what else they have at the museum. Come on, let's go. I mean, just look at the wood paneling going down the hallway. Everything is so detail oriented. Every single joint is put together so well. And that's important because when this thing's on the rails, it's going to rock around a little bit. So it's got to be built solid. This was really fun. Let's go back outside. my first time ever inside a real train. It was so much fun and look, I don't even know what this stuff is, but you see it's got big old chains on it. And I assume this is like a safety chain to hook it onto another rail car in front of it. It's got all this different stuff. And to put it into perspective how big this train is, Cowboy Jack's about six feet tall. This thing is really tall. I don't even know how, much, how tall it is. I can't guess numbers that big. They have these nice platforms for you to stand on so you can walk outside of it and get an idea for how big it is. But you know what else is about these boards that we're standing on? They make really cool sound. You know how to make sound with your feet? <laughs> I like making sound with my feet. Do you guys? It was a lot of fun. <laughs> got this great pavilion here you can come and relax and just enjoy your time outside it's such a beautiful day today I'm glad we're here looking at all these trains but we're only getting started that's a big red caboose but hold on we're not going there yet they have something else really exciting here it's actually a train switching tower have you guys ever seen a train switching tower before they used to be all over the place nowadays they've been replaced with by computers that are only about this big, big silver boxes that sit on the tracks. But back in the day, there was a lot of people that had to sit up in this tower and do their work. Take a look at how tall it is. Why don't you go up there and I'll meet you up there. Hey, you guys are up really, really high. I feel short down here. Do I look short from all the way up there? Wow. Hey, enough playing around. I'm gonna come up there and we're gonna look around that train tower. Whenever you're going up really tall stairs, you gotta be safe. So you wanna make sure to put your hands on the handrails. That way if you fall, you've got something to brace yourself. Wow, this is a really tall tower. And like I said, it's called a train tower because these sit right on the train tracks. If you look right over there, what do you see? Yeah, those are real train tracks. Let's go inside and check it out. Whoa! It's like a time capsule in here. It's really exciting. It's like we're taking a trip back in time. All the way from the original wood floors to the color of the paint on the walls. I bet your parents talk about shiplap a lot. Well, this stuff on the wall is actual, real deal shiplap. <laughs> It's really exciting. Hey, look at this. There's so many different things to see in here. So like, this right here is an old typewriter. Have you guys ever seen an old fashioned typewriter before? So you might recognize these keys like Q-W-E-R-T-Y. Like if you take a typing class at school, but nowadays we don't do it on machines like this. We actually replace typewriters with the new fancy computers that we use now. See, this here is the actual switching device. 
So what a switching device does is there are trains all coming into one station and there's a lot of tracks and it gets really congested. Well, somebody has to make sure that the trains don't run into each other, right? You don't wanna see trains run into each other. That would be no fun at all. So these levers, you can pull on them and move them around and those actually, see they go in and out like this? That'll change what train gets to come on what track. And so they would do that in a series and make sure that no trains ran into each other. It was a really important job for a really long time. This machine was actually in service until 2004. That was a, probably a little bit of time before you guys were born, but uh, Cowboy Jack was actually alive back then. It seems like this machine is so old. I mean, it's been around for a long, long time. Hey, there's lots of other old stuff we can look at in here. Have you guys ever seen one of these? No, this is not the iPhone 1. This is actually one of the first uh, telephones ever invented. It's really, really old school. So this was like the speaker that you talk into, and then it's like headset, you would put that on, and so you could hear people. And you couldn't hear them as good as you can hear them today. And you know what else? There was no such thing as FaceTime back then. Boy, there's a lot of neat stuff. See, this is another version of the old tiny telephone. Look here, another old typewriter. Wow, this right here, I bet you've never seen one of these. This is how you do Morse code. If you look outside, you can see a long way down the tracks. I mean, really far. Go take a look. Did you guys hear that? That was an actual train radio. The conductors are talking to each other. There they go again. They're talking to each other to make sure they're safe to come into the station. I thought he was gonna talk again, but he didn't. Hey, when you guys were looking out the window, I saw you eyeing something. Are you still thinking about that red caboose? All right, let's go check it out. <laughs> All right, guys, the exploring continues. Come on, let's go. Hey, that's not a real door. That door's just painted on the building. Boy, I almost ran right into that wall. All right, let's go look at the caboose. I'm really excited. Have you guys ever been in a caboose before? So a caboose was like the last train, the last train car on a train. The whole long train, you'd have all these different cars and then the big important conductor would sit in the back in the caboose and he could talk to people up in front and tell them what needed to happen to make sure the train was staying safe. Well, there's a lot to look at. I just love this color. It's really bright red. Whoa. If you come up close, you can see this is like really reflective. up here. I'm on the back of the caboose. It's really exciting up here. There's a good breeze and I got all this room to walk around. <laughs> wow. All right, well, let's go inside the caboose. We've seen all around the outside. Now let's go inside and see what it's all about. Right, now just like the other train, this one has a door too. And see, this would be like the conductor's office space. He would have a desk in here where he could work and make sure that everything was running smoothly on the train. See up here, that's what they call the observation tower. So the conductor could get up there and look all the way down the top. This would be like an old-fashioned stove that makes sure it'd stay nice and cozy in here if they were going through a really cold place. Because these trains, they go through snow, rain, sleet, or hail. There's no stopping them. I don't 
don't even know what this guy does, but I bet it had a big important job. I'm not sure, we'll try to find out. Oh, look over here. Wow, this is a map of the United States showing where all the railroads go. So today, we're like right here, right outside of Houston, Texas and Rosenberg. See, a train from here could run up all the way through the whole U.S., even into Canada, and on to Alaska. Boy, that's really exciting. Did you guys like seeing those model trains earlier? You remember the little bitty tiny ones? Well, there's even more of them here, except some of them are outside, and they're a little bit bigger. It's going to be a lot of fun. Let's go look at them. You guys know how they used to get water in the old times? It didn't always come out of just a running pipe and a faucet inside the house. They used to have to get it out of what was called a well. And a well looked just like this. So you would pull up this, there'd be a bucket on this rope, and there'd be water down in there. But today, well, <laughs> I said well because here I am at the well, and I'm saying well. <laughs> I'm kind of hungry. Cowboy Jack needs a snack. Hey, looky there. There's my lunch. What was it doing in the well? I don't know. Let's go find a spot to sit down and enjoy some food. Oh, here's a shady spot right over here. You guys like picnic tables? I do. Whoa, this one's really comfy. What do I have today? Let's find out. Ooh, I got some water. I love water. You should too, especially if you're outside playing. You gotta stay hydrated. I'm gonna take a sip. Mm -mm -mm. That was good water. All right, let's see what my snack is today. It's always good to have a healthy snack when you're out. Oh, wow. Do you guys see what these are? Is this bananas? No. Is it lettuce? No. Think really hard. It's something that rabbits really like. Yeah, they're carrots. I love carrots, they're really tasty. So these are called baby carrots because they've been trimmed down to be little bitty, little bite size like this. And you can just grab them out of a bag and take a bite. Did you guys hear how crunchy that was? Baby carrots are really crunchy, but they're really tasty. Mm. Some people like to dip them in ranch, but I think they're good just by themselves. Mm. Mm. Boy, if you haven't ever had baby carrots before, you should really try some because they are super tasty. I got this whole bag full of them. I could sit here and eat them all day. And they make that fun noise when you bite into them. Well, hmm. I don't want you guys to have to sit here and watch me eat all day. I just wanted to show you that I'm having a healthy snack with these really tasty baby carrots. But like I said, we've still got a lot to look at here at the museum. We saw those little model trains earlier, those little bitty ones with that whole big city around it. Here they have some outside model trains that are even bigger. They're like this big, maybe even this big. We're gonna go check them out. Come on, let's go. So y'all remember those little bitty tiny models that we looked at earlier? These are the big ones. This is like a whole full scale railroad town out here. Guys, hear it going? Look, this is a circus train because it's got all these circus animals on it. That's really exciting.
guys see that train running along the track, the circus train? It's really cool, but this thing is so big, we can't even keep up with it. It's going all over the place. Let's get up, catch up with it right over here. Wow, look at this. This is really neat. There's a railway bridge across this river. Here comes the circus train. was so exciting to see. I love that circus train. It had the real lights and sounds and everything. And here we are outside with this real model train. That was so neat. So this little town we're looking at here is actually like a recreation of the town of Rosenberg. So this right here is like the Brazos River that's in Texas. Whoa, hey, those alligators almost got you. Look at this neat little camper. I hope nobody was asleep in there because they're awake now. That train was loud. There's so much to look at here in the whole town. Look at that, Leonard's Fine Foods. There's a lot of people standing out there. There's a little gas station. Hey, there's even a guy standing out there. Looks like he's taking a little coffee break and changing tires. That means the caboose is now the first car. seen a lot of fun stuff. Like I said, this is a real actual museum. So there's a lot of historical information about the area and about what the railroad did for this area. Let's go take a look real quick. Look, there's lots of pictures and facts about the area. Fort Bend County, Texas, that's where we're at. They 
of all these historical items like that old porter's hat. A porter used to take your ticket and kind of keep everything organized on the train. And here's another model of a Pullman car. That's a real bell from a train. Wow, I like bells. That's really cool. Here's an old telephone switchboard. You used to have to call an operator and tell him who you wanted to talk to. And they'd look it up on this chart and flip these switches to make sure you could get in touch with your grandma or whoever it was you were trying to call. You could spend all day in here looking and learning about all the different historical items they have here at the museum. It's really neat. And you know what? There's a lot of history about women and the railroad because women actually played a huge part in making the railroad what it was. It's really cool. There's so much exciting stuff and so much to learn about. Like, look at this. Do you guys know what this is? This is a clock. Did you know that the railroad is actually responsible for inventing the modern time zones like we have today? Because it used to be before the railroad, you didn't really, you just kind of woke up in the morning when the sun came up and you worked until the sun went down. But when they were shipping things across the big, the entire country, you'd need to know what time they were going to get there. And so they invented time zones and kind of got the clocks out in front of everybody. The railroad was responsible for that. That's really cool. And then look at this. This is kind of, this is really neat. This is what the inside of a train looks like where the driver is. So this would be like the brake switch right here. And this is like the speed, I think. I'm not real sure because I'm not a train conductor. I'm a cowboy. But there's a whole lot of switches and buttons and important things. All right, well, that was really neat. All right, cowboys and cowgirls. I hope you learned a lot about trains and enjoyed seeing all those cool trains running around. We saw the little bitty bitty blue ones. We saw the bigger ones and we even went inside real trains. I had a blast. If you had fun, go ahead and subscribe to Cowboy Jack on YouTube. And until next time, yeah!